Noob, you are a spoiler as I am Adam. We're here to talk about Nope, which is Jordan Peele's latest movie. Um, came out today. Today is the release day. No, well, technically yesterday, but yesterday was preview night. Um, so, um, I guess today is the first official day it's open. Um, I, I, I saw this, the last movie I saw in a the theater was where, well, I mean, technically I saw others since, uh, because I went to Long Island International Film Expo, but, um, what's it called, uh, because I went to that, I, uh, I saw other movies before this, but we didn't, I didn't do the episode about that yet, I'm going to, probably this weekend, um, and I'm also going to do one about Stony Brook Film Festival, which happens this week, and I'm going to, to screenings, one tomorrow, one Sunday, um, we'll talk about those when they happen, um, but for right now, we have, um, Nope, and the reason why I bring up having seen Where the Crawdads Sing is the last movie I saw in a theater, is because I don't remember if I told this story on the, on the podcast, that is definitely a maneuver you should not have done. That is very much a red light. Um, so, I don't remember if I told the story on the podcast or not, but we, uh, when I saw Where the Crawdads Sing, I went, similar to this week, right after work on, uh, on a Friday. Um, we got early, so I was able to go to an afternoon screening. And I'm sitting there in the theater, and um, it's one of the most full theaters I've been in. Now, when we say most full theaters, I mean per capita full, not... Um, full in terms of number of people physically there. Because it was one of those small theaters, um, not one of the full size, you know. Well, you know what I'm saying, where it's like you, you have the smaller theaters that fit like 50 people, and then there's like an IMAX theater that seats like 300, and this was one of those small theaters. The kind of thing that if you were to rent out a theater, that's the theater you'd be renting out. They wouldn't be letting you rent out the IMAX. Um, so, I'm in this pack theater, um, so white that it's a few, um, the only place you could get whiter is maybe a clan rally. Uh, I bring the average age in the theater down to about 95, um, and I'm sitting next to, you know, people on all sides, and, and this, the woman to my right is blind, and the only reason I know that is because her daughter was this, was sitting with her was describing the movie to her the entire time, and on my left was a woman and a husband who very much didn't want to be there and made his disdain with the movie uh, very apparent to anyone who was there. Um, and the reason why I bring all this up is because before this movie, uh, they played a trailer for the Emmett Till biopic, Till. Um, I didn't know the trailer was out. I knew the movie was coming out of something like this year, um, later in the year, but um, they played the trailer for it. Um, and I would have paid full admission price to have that audience at Where the Crawdads Sing sit through the Emmett Till trailer to watch their reaction. And the reason I say that is because they showed the trailer for The Woman King, which is the new Viola Davis movie, um, about the, uh, the invasion of the Europeans in, um, in Africa, um, and, and the, the African nation that held them off, um, and they showed that trailer, and there was visible discomfort in the room, um, not only was there visible discomfort in the room, uh, from, from some of the people around who were watching this movie, but there was also a woman in my row toward the other end, because I, I, I tend to sit, when I buy my tickets, I try to sit as far away from people as possible, um, so I, I sat kind of far away from this group, um, and they were down the other end. And this woman started loudly quoting GDP numbers for African nations. And I'm like, what does that have to do with the movie? And I, I would have paid good money to see that audience to see the trailer for Till. Or this movie, for that matter. Um, because while it doesn't have that same kind of um, uh, um, racial undercurrent that... Get Out had, it is, you know, it is still a very not white movie, <laughs> there's like one white guy in the entire movie, um, 
which is fine. And, and, and everyone does a great job in the movie. The movie's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to put a spoiler warning, though. And that's only because of how well marketed the movie was by Universal that that spoiler warning gets played. Whereas, um, you watch the trailer, and you have no idea what the movie is. You think there's aliens, you think there's, you know, like, there, there's the inkling that there's going to be aliens. Especially the first trailer, when they, where you have no sense of what's going on. The second trailer gives a little bit more away, but still not nearly enough. To, to do it. And if you're someone who wants to go to see the movie, um, I would advise you go in as blind as possible. So as the movie unfolds and things start to make more sense, it I think it would work a lot. It works a lot better on that level than if you go in with the movie spoiled. Um, so that's why I play the spoiler warning. Um, but the movie is really great. The visuals are fantastic and and the way that everything looks, I'm trying to get around, like, the, the issue is, to say too much more would be a spoilery, so, I know the podcast is called Beware of Spoilers, but it's one of those things where you're better off going in without the, uh, without the spoilers, if you intend on seeing this movie reasonably soon, um, because uh, the longer you wait, the more it's going to get spoiled for you, and it's, it's fantastic. Now, I, again, going off of marketing, there was one thing that I thought was kind of surprising. Um, uh, I don't understand... Uh, look, I understand that tomorrow um, is Marvel's big panel at San Diego Comic-Con, and we'll do a full can- Comic-Con recap episode on 30 minute reviews don't worry about that but tomorrow is their big panel um, where they're going to unveil a bunch of new shit including presumably a trailer for Black Panther Wakanda Forever now you would have thought they would have want to put this number one before Thor Love and Thunder because Love and Thunder is coming it was the, the last movie before Wakanda Forever you would have thought they would have wanted to have that trailer there um but if not there, you're probably going to want to... I would have thought I would have put it here. Because, like, every horror movie and every movie with a, with, with a, with a, with a, uh, a, a non-white person in the lead had its trailer before this movie. Like, between now and the end of the year. Um, with the exception of Amsterdam, which has John David Washington in a leading role. But beyond that, every other movie has its trailer here. And it's not like... The see that's the kind of thing I would have anticipated they were doing, where it's like they would want that out going into the panel to generate hype, and then it's like the trailer's running. Uh, and, and and what is noticeable is that you know Universal does recognize the importance of this movie and and how much this movie's going to resonate. Like they they had faith in this movie because this was the movie they opted to put the trailer for Oppenheimer in front of. Now, it may have something to do with the fact that Oppenheimer comes out about a year from now, almost exactly a year from today, is when Oppenheimer comes out by Christopher Nolan, and, and it confused me in the beginning because I didn't know that was coming, and then they showed the thing for Nolan's production company, I'm like, oh, Nolan produced this? No, it was just, that's the trailer for, for Oppenheimer, they put before it, um, which was an interesting idea. Um, it hasn't endeared me to seeing Oppenheimer in any way, shape, or form. It's kind of just like, by the way, you know the guy who invented the nuclear bomb? Yeah, we made a biopic about him, and it is going, it is starring uh, all of these people, and the movie comes out this uh, in, uh, year from today, and it is uh, directed and written by Christopher Nolan. Um, so that'll be a lot of people's first taste of Nolan's new movie. Uh, riding on Jordan Peele's coattails, which feels good. Um, what else was there to address with this movie? We're going to go into spoiler territory now. I know I played the spoiler warning already, but we're going to go into the spoiler territory, so for real this time, we're going into the spoiler territory, where um, I think it's interesting the way the movie unfolds, because it's like the fact that they are animal trainers very much plays into the movie in a way that when I saw the marketing materials I didn't think they would 
I thought it was just going to be a cop-out explanation for how they were able to get everything they needed um, to to capture the the alien on tape. Um, and I thought that would be it. It's like, oh, okay, they have connections in Hollywood. That's how that was going to be the thing. Um, and I think the idea that, you know, they have this cool, like, you know, alien craft that looks kind of balloony. And, and, and that's the thing, too, is the fact that it looks so linen and cloth, especially when they show that earlier in the movie, it, it makes you think, like, oh, so what's what's the angle here? Like, that was my first thought. As I, and that's the thing, too, is the movie does kind of work the puzzle box in a way, where it's like they introduce you to all the characters and, and everything that's going on. And um, I, I just feel like, and this is probably my only critique of the movie, um, I just feel like not enough is done with Stephen Yen's, um, Young, Stephen Young, Stephen Young's, um, what's it called? Stephen Young's backstory. Um, because it's like, they explained it a little bit. It's like, he was a, a child star. He was, a, he was in a movie that was like The Goonies, but not The Goonies. Um, and then he goes to, um, he ends up on, like, I, I guess it's just to show, like, I, I think that, like, his entire backstory is really just to show the expertise of, um, what's it called, the expertise of everyone, uh, of, uh, of, of OJ, um, when he talks about why you can't, you know, work with chimps and all of that, um, and, and he, he was on a, a sitcom that was like, it had a um, what's it, called? it had a chimp in the in the show, and because it had a chimp in the show, uh, the chimp ended up going nuts on set and and killed um, at least one of the actors. Um, and then I think it was there was a second actor who, well, I mean his co-star who was like the girl around his age, um, ended up disfigured from it. And it's like when you watch the trailer and they show like the spaceship coming and you see the person standing up and it's like, oh, they're all fucked up under there. What happened there? That's just his co-star from, from then. That's it. Like she looks kind of, like the person looks kind of alien and looks like they're trying to disguise, but it's like, that's, it's such a great misdirect that it, it works very well. Um, and the movie does kind of play with the fact that you would, you were expecting something going into it. It's kind of like the marketing is part of the movie in that regard, and then on top of that, too, there's also the, um, what I was saying with, 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 uh, with this character, I don't think there was enough to tie that incident to the alien, and tie it in properly, like, that, it, it's a pretty substantial part of the movie, and a lot of time is spent on it, but I don't think enough is done to really tie it together, um, even if it was just, like, he knew that the thing that, you know, was there wasn't a, um, wasn't a spaceship, and he knew it was a creature on its own. Um, that, I think, would have been a much better reveal, um, is that that happens then, where it's like the thing comes, and he's like, I saw this thing that can, that can come and attack, and, uh, it, it will kill people, and, you know, I have managed to tame it, and then that would be, I think that would be a better way to have handled that, um, but I think that's probably my only complaint with the movie, um, beyond that, I, I, like, everything else I loved about, like, I, like, the fact that it turns from almost this 1950s style, well, I mean, the entire movie is a 1950s style science fiction movie with monsters and aliens, and it's, it's that kind of thing, um, and, the fact that it kind of turns from the alien movie with the abductions and, and all of that, it, it goes from that to the movie about, um, what's it called, about a, uh, what's what I'm looking for here, a, uh, like a monster that's trying to, that, that's, and again, they don't make the monster to be like the Indominus Rex, not to, you know, mention anything by name, but, you know, where it's like, it's killing for killing's sake, it still operates like an animal, because it still operates on animal psychology, it's like, this is, it is made, this it's home, 
and it hunts because it is hungry. It is not here to hunt because of that. And it is acting in this way because we have heard it when, it, when we put the decoy horse out, the decoy, decoy horse um, ripped its insides or whatever. Um, that that was pretty cool. And then it's like, even like the effects of like the, in, the interior of the thing when they show the, the deaths of everyone in the arena, like that was a pretty well done sequence too. Um, Again, I just feel like, and I think it's too, um, the, the whole thing with the, the TV show that plays in slightly, but not nearly enough, I feel like the, and there are a few points in the movie where it's like, it's unclear, but it's all background information that's kind of hazy, because the most important thing in the movie is the alien, and it's not, I'm not criticizing Jordan Peele, he's a much better writer than I can ever hope to be. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, they, the, the amount of mockery, I, I understand it's supposed to be 1998, but I feel like in 1998, if there was a live sitcom taming with a chimp that went nuts, and this chimp went and, and, um, and, I mean, look, definitely one person died. And the thing is, too, they kind of make it seem like it's possible that the aliens have to do that with the shoe standing up on end. And then framing it like it is a... Framing it the same way they frame the other horses in the movie with a title card. Um, but it doesn't seem... There's nothing else really connecting it to the aliens. It's connected more to his backstory. Um, the... The whole thing with the... Uh, what's the what, where was I going with that? The, um... Fuck. I my train of thought. The whole thing with the, um... Uh, fuck. Um, the horses and the running away and the, the oh that was it the back the back story with the, um, the, the 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 sitcom they make it very apparent oh my god gas is almost under four dollars a gallon uh, we're at four oh seven now it's amazing. Um, they, with, with the whole backstory um, that happens there, they don't do really enough to accentuate why... I don't want to say why it's a, as big a deal as it is, but they definitely would not have had a Mad Magazine cover making fun of it in 1998 if at least one person is dead. That's the thing. Is it, they, don't, they aren't clear about how many people died in that because it's a, it's a four-person like, sitcom, like, it was a four-person sitcom, and, where it's, like, dad, mom, the uh, brother, sister, um, it's the, it's the four people there, and it's, like, okay, well, we know the brother didn't die, because he's still there, we know the sister didn't die, because the sister, um, what's it called, the sister went to, uh, went to the event and ended up dying later in the movie, but I think the implication is, from the way that everything is shot, is that, the mother and the father both got killed. I mean, the mother definitely got killed. I don't think the mother survived that. And I think that if if two people got killed, like, it would have been like if they did a, a bit on SNL um, and they did a Mad Magazine cover of the death of, um, what's his name, who died when they were shooting cr um, The Crow. Or... Um, when, when the the, uh, the the deaths the deaths of those people on the set of the Twilight Zone, um, like that would have been a similar kind of thing, and it's it, it just that, and then like the entire thing about like how like how much money do, I, I feel like the the whole thing where they don't have money and he's selling the horses um, doesn't really feel like it like. I don't think you needed to do the in-depth storyline because I don't think you needed to like do it that way to be like okay and here's why they're selling the horses off to do it um, you could have just been like oh they're selling the horses off because um, I don't know like they don't like people don't, don't need horses and well that's still playing into the in-depth part but the in-depth doesn't exactly work through the entire movie um and it's like, you know, that's why they're buying the horses that, you know, why, like, why is he offering to buy the horse? Maybe just have him be offering a lot of money for the horses 
because the the debt aspect doesn't play into the story enough to make it function right. If that makes sense, like there's not in, like it's in the beginning and it doesn't quite work as well later on. Um, and then on top of that, it's again someone who doesn't know how to handle animals handling animals who shouldn't be handled. Um, and again, the other thing too is like in the movie they show the the guy with the cameras and the, and the metal helmet. It's like, oh, that looks weird. Maybe that's an alien too. And that's what they kind of do. But no, it's just a reporter from TMZ who ordinarily I hate people who get very injured and are still very focused on whatever bullshit they were doing when that happened. But the fact that it's a paparazzi from TMZ uh, makes it work a lot better than it, one would anticipate. Um, but, but yeah, Nope is a fantastic movie. If you have not yet seen it, I recommend you see it and you see it in the biggest screen possible. Um, my AMC fucked up and they're playing the, the wrong print on the screen. Um, so, because they had these giant black bars on either side at the Dolby, at the Dolby screen. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely worth checking out if, you, um, if you're a fan of movies like this. Um, but, until our next episode, which will be tomorrow morning, for the gray man. Have a great rest of your week.